In today's video, we're surviving 72 hours on this raft using only a 3D printer. With an unlimited supply of filament and my CAD software to sketch up whatever I need. Unlimited amount of electricity using two solar panels of 800 watts. And this battery that converts all the power generated by the solar panels and makes it usable electricity for us to power all this stuff. But as we're using electricity, that number is steadily gonna decrease and we're gonna have to generate electricity through the solar panels to keep this workstation alive. That's the game. I haven't set anything up so far. The solar panels are not even connected, but looks like we have a storm on its way. So let's make some shelter. Oh, am I stupid? Am I stupid? I could just put it down as a floor upstairs. That would be way better. Now water can get trapped. Oh, Jesus Christ. We got to connect the solar panels to start generating some electricity. Should be as simple as connecting these M4 connectors and an XT60 on the end. There we go. I was then able to start sketching up my very first item to print. I have no tool to help me eat this, so let's make a fork. We have the fork ready to print, it's gonna take nine minutes. Let's do it. While I was waiting for the printer to be done, I decided to make an intro and this freak accident happened. I caught that on video now, didn't I? Uh, we have an input of 60 watts. That's mainly because the solar panels are aimed at the forest. And the output is 206 watts, which means we're gonna run out of battery, which means we gotta move. The battery was going down fast and weather for day two didn't look promising with mostly overcast. We got a fork. Okay, got the tuna, got the fork. Hmm, pretty good. Number one on the list for survival is a knife. So I sketched it up and made this transition that tends to dominate the comment section. <sighs> oh. A knife. I brought some soup that I was supposed to eat and I got a knife and a fork, Jesus Christ. Well, before that, we gotta hang these lights up before you can't see anything. But I don't have mounts so we can screw them up to the ceiling. So we gotta print that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. <laughs> yes. Simon is what you call not the sharpest tool in the shed, and this happened literally 10 minutes later. I did the mistake of bringing light out on the raft. Take a look at this. Jesus Christ, they're absolutely everywhere. I'll eat my soup with the fork, have mosquitoes for dessert. That's day one. A Simon in his natural habitat only brought a blanket and no long pants. He used the 3D printer bed to heat him up. Quite clever indeed. Let's go, I got the spoon. So now we can eat the cold soup with not a fork. However, I got the innards of an air fryer. I think it works. And I believe I could MacGyver it so we could heat the soup, which would be really nice. And I watched this Mythbusters episode where they took aluminum foil and made it to a perfect sphere. <laughs> This is tin foil. Very shiny. It's just a heating element, but I have no pan or pot, so I bet I could make something out of this. Damn. All right, we got the shovel. That's gonna make more sense later. That didn't work. We need a pot about the same diameter as a filament spool. So let's use this. The heating contraption will slot into these cylinders and here's a holder for that switch. Now let's get it. Cool. The switch going in. Just like that. And then this whole contraption just should go right in. That was almost too easy. It's working! Yes! <laughs> Simon once again demonstrates his superior intellect. The pan didn't heat up even slightly. I think what we need is a solid sheet of metal, 
possibly the aluminium foil has air gaps in between each layer and so the transfer of heat is very, very poor. I called in a veto. Yeah, we have three of those I didn't mention. Weird. Now we have a pan, we can cook. You can see it's using 800 watts, just like advertised, and we still have 80% battery left. This is what happens when you have your own chickens. They leave skid marks. Jesus Christ. The heater for the food and 3D printing things all the time was eating through the battery. Even though it was midday, the solar panels wasn't generating much of anything. I did, however, finish the parts for our next project. <coughs> Though I had to reprint parts, which is why they are now red. One of the most requested objectives, by far, was to make this raft radio controlled. I've 3D printed all the parts for my gigantic servo. Oh, you thought I only had one? We got, we got two threaded rods for linkage, a receiver, and a 2S LiPo for the servos. And of course, the radio control. Pretty straightforward to put this together, so let's see if we... All right, let's go. Servo going in first. All right, we have a good mounting position for the servo and the linkage is all done. <laughs> that was way easier than expected. I then had these parts, enough tightened so they would stay in place, but not so much that I wouldn't be able to twist to turn the throttle on and off. No way. <laughs> I could then sit on the top floor and drive it around the entire lake, which was a solid kilometer of driving and it was actually super fun. The servos though I don't think had a very good time. With day two complete, the freezing temperatures made me want to start a fire and so I debarked some logs and the most incredible thing happened. Let's see if you can start a fire using cancel wire and a battery. I don't have any matches, I don't have any traditional tools to help me start this fire, but I have this piece of cancel wire, a resistance wire, that heats up when you apply voltage to it. It's red hot. It's me again, hopefully for the last time. Once again, Simon is being an idiot. A fire on a wooden raft. What the actual fire? Nonetheless, the control wire was quite nifty, I must say. If only Tom Hanks had cancelled wire, he could have had a lot better time a lot sooner. Now the high IQ move is to use this flexible filament as fishing line. Ah, it's almost impossible to pull unless you got these. Right now it's 1.75 millimeters, just like all the other filaments. Could we extrude it down to 0.4? I'm trying to make it thinner. If I had a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, I don't think... Here's the printed fishing rod with a working reel. Sick. Here's the fishing hook I sketched up, looks really nice. Here's what came out of it. Okay, okay, new, new plan. I'm on the extrude the filament train again. I, in Simplify 3D, I've written some code to say that the extruder should never stop while moving in the x-axis to avoid pulling up the filament and lowering the bed before you print so we can eventually take it out. Can't go wrong. The code, nah, didn't work. They put so many safety features on these things nowadays, you can't hijack them. What I did was I sketched up a mace and printed it directly on the bed. That really worked. I'm calling it. That's fishing line. I am calling in my second veto. I pictured it would be difficult to print fishing hooks. Now all we need are some worms. It's just not that kind of dirt. Forget those pesky worms. This is way cooler. We're diving down to find clams, but it actually ended up taking a really long time. So instead of showing all that footage, here's the clip when I finally caught one. Yes! <laughs> yes! Hey, little buddy! All right, let, let's catch a fish. 
Look at this, it doesn't end. A new floater, the first one was way too big. 3D printed rod, 3D printed fishing line. We got the clam and a steel hook. Fuck. Okay, we're fully decked out now. Oh! I have one! No way! Let's go! Let's go! Whoa, no, 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 no! Yes! No big deal, of course. I expected this all along. <laughs> hey, bye bye. We caught a fish on the clam, and this piece of shit. In some weird way, it just feels impossible that this piece of. Oh shit, I messed up. Piece of plastic and metals could run this entire raft. In fact, it's been running the computer, the 3D printer, the heater, the motor, everything on this raft. And I think what sets this apart, it's the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max, is the fact that you can have one kilowatt of solar input, which recharges this battery insanely quickly. There's a 2400 watt inverter, so you can run water boilers, you know, really demanding stuff. You have expandable batteries, two of them. You also have a huge number of outputs, your DC, USB, USB-C. With a two kilowatt hour battery, it really does last a long time. And instead of taking a long cable out to the forest with your electric chainsaw, I take this. It's the perfect tool for the garage. I had EcoFlow, well, actually send two of these. One of which I want to give away to you guys. I'm going to do that in the next video, so stay tuned. Okay, back to the raft. Uh, anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. It was, a, it was a fun experiment for sure. And the fact that you can actually do it with a battery like this is insane. So, well, thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, have an awesome day. All right, see you guys.